This conference will now be recorded. Well, thank you. She didn't answer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how's everybody doing? Great. Meet you. Cool. Good, good, good. Yeah. No, Anything we got new and exciting? Um, I mean, evidently these machines drop, you know, and the, the support calls come kind of in cycles, you know. So uh, yesterday I was bombarded. It was crazy yesterday. So but that's what I like. I don't like the same old thing. So that's good. <laughs> Well, no. nobody, nobody's Not got anything. I, I got one for you. Uh, all right. What you got, Glenn? We'll get to Danny here in just a second. I saw him talking, yeah. too. Yeah, let Danny go. Mine finally arrived last week. And, of course, I was going off for a few days. So we got it running yesterday. Uh, Michael uh, come up and helped me with it and uh, actually made my first box a few minutes ago. Nice. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I'll be ready to spend my hour, but I feel like I have arrived and don't awesome. know anything, but I'm enjoying it. All right. What do you think about it? How did it come in? It come in great. It was, uh, you know, it was lost in California for two weeks and this, that, and the other, but the uh, local uh, <clears throat> trucking terminal, the lady searched it out for me. She kept me abreast even working weekends trying to find it and it come in intact and everything was easy uh, uh like i say michael come up and help me put it together and uh okay. spent the day with me which was wonderful if anybody has i mean that what i went through with was amazing awesome. I appreciate it. yeah he knows his stuff so i'm glad he was able to to be close enough and, and help you out so that's awesome Got a question though. Uh, when you do the drawing and uh, you want to do multiples, like a box or this little tray that I made, I wanted a bottom, two sides, and two ends. Can mm -hmm. I store that all on the same drawing? I've made individual ones when I've done my AutoCAD drawing of it. Uh, yeah, you can. And you can uh, make the settings the same, but make them all different colors if you want to output them at different periods and then just turn the ones off you don't want to output. Okay. Or choose selected graphics, you know, and only select the stuff that you want to output. There's a couple of ways. And I can show you that if you want to get on your one hour thing pretty soon. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through all that stuff, too. I, so. I apologize for not spending more time with my... Uh, uh, light burn before now, but I've had a pretty busy schedule on sure. things. And so I'm sure. just getting it. I'll give you a call after I get a little or set up some time after I get a little time with it. Okay. And if you need a, a little, you know, a quick crash course on it, you know, to do exactly what you're talking about, we've got a 30 minute session, you know, that you could sign up for and even do it tomorrow, you know, and we could show you that part of it, you know, and give you a few little hints. Now, that'll still be cool. So. The the big challenge that I've run into, I ended up with several events hit me all at one time. I was sure. hoping the machine would have been a few weeks earlier or whatever, but I'm right. grateful to have it. Sure, sure. Well, we're here whenever. And uh, Jared put a chat uh, about making boxes, and he put a link to Maker Case. And I haven't been to that one. Um, I've been to a couple other. There's Boxes PY, and there's mm. a couple other generators and things like that. Uh, but I'll have to check this one out too. He put it a, a link in there. Okay. Yeah, I've been to multiple, and this is the best one I've found. You you can do a lot of variations to it. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. Wow. Where did my little thing go. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I am sharing the screen. I didn't even. I always get that mixed up. But yeah, you can create uh, all kinds of stuff in there. And then you know, for doing turf and stuff, there's that O2 Creative. Um, and you can go to the laser stuff, and these are light burn generators for basic power and speed, advanced power and speed. Um, you can do one for engraving. You can check your engraved line interval. You know, if you're if you're seeing striations, you know, seeing horizontal 
lines in your engraving, it may be that your focus and your line interval aren't playing well together. And these are some tools to help you figure that out. Uh, and then here's one that you may be interested in. That's the kerf test. So you can output that on whatever the material is. And it'll help you dial in what your kerf offset needs to be. Okay. So I'll um, put a link to that in there too. One other thing that I've stumbled on, uh, Piedmont Plastic is close to us in Greensboro. I have that place over there. And uh, uh, I had another situation where I needed some acrylic and I went over and a guy told me, he said, if you'll ask for the cutoffs and the scra the, their scraps, uh, right. he said, just call and ask me for $50 worth or whatever. And it's unbelievable what all he gave me and gave a variety of stuff to work with. Huh. Just food All right, Annie, now I've got to ask. You said you're in Greensboro. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I got to ask. Uh, <laughs> That's that's funny that there's only a, a small number of us on here because I'm from Kernersville. Well, I'm actually from Stokesdale. If that makes hips you feel. Oh any. man, that's funny. We're 15 minutes from each other. This people all across the country could be on here, and <laughs> we're 15 minutes. That's funny. What what machine do you have, Jared? I've got the Nova 51 130. Perfect. <laughs> Is that what you got? That's what I've got. Okay. Well, feel free to we'll we'll swap on the side. We'll we'll get contact info. Sounds cool. good. Yeah, that is a good idea asking for that kind of stuff. I've thought about even granite places, you know, going and getting some of the stuff they'd normally throw away because they can't make a, you know, a an island out of it or anything. But there may be some big enough pieces you can do some neat work on. So. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to check local sources and go through their dumpsters or see what they've got, remnants and stuff. You can probably get all kind of things. Is all that cast that you got, Danny? You're on yeah, mute. Yeah, uh, m most of it was. He gave me some extruded. He said there's some in there and do what I can with it. But uh, and, yeah. Uh, well, extruded cuts really well. It just doesn't leave that nice white contrast when you engrave, you know, but for cutting out keychains or, you know, making whatever, you know, that you don't really need to engrave, it still cuts beautifully. This was my first keychain yesterday. Okay. Nice. I like working with acrylic. That's one of my favorite mediums. Right. Um, Glenn, you let Danny go first. So what do you got? Oh, oh. Um, so I'm using the rotary a lot, obviously. I don't know if you all seen a bunch of the cups I did. But um, anyway, um, I've seen a lot of people are using these jigs. Mm -hmm. I don't see how in the world that can be. I mean, they must. the images have got to be really small, I guess, because you can't really go around the curve of that cup very well with a jig putting many cups in a row is what you know what i mean um so i know i heard of people using the four inch lens instead mm -hmm. to get obviously they have a, a longer focal length i guess or a longer right. sweet spot um what what actually can you achieve with that i mean I, you know you got of course you got somebody that accidentally or or can possibly achieve but what's what's the realistic achievement of that of, of like width of a 32 ounce or a 30 ounce cup you know yeah i haven't used one um i've been watching them though they're neat um but i haven't personally used a jig not not for a cup you know mm. uh, for smaller yeah, stuff like pins or knives or something like that or flasks you know they don't have a whole lot of curvature and you know but i mean it's got to work or they wouldn't be doing it <laughs> yeah no i'm sure it's yep. working it's just um you know I, I i looked at you know like i have some i say competition or whatever um they're 30 35 miles away from me but um you know they're offering some stuff it's a little cheaper than i am and i started looking and their image size like when you go on their website their image size was really small and i'm guessing mm -hmm. it's because all they want to do is put them on jigs and just run a ton of cups at once mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah god jason yeah 
No, as I say, you can you can do them on a jig. I mean, uh, for a fiber laser, I've done that for a long time using the bigger focal lens, the the bigger lens. Um, and you could do the same thing on a CO2 as well. Um, you are limited more on your size, of course. Uh, but once you figure out where that sweet spot is between too much and not enough, kind of, if you get what I'm saying, yep. um, you can kind of push the limits and, and make it work. Um, if you're doing something around the cup, obviously a jig's not going to allow you to accomplish that. But um, there are some, some, some instances where it may be faster to just throw it on a jig and be done with it. Um, but when you're doing more intricate stuff that kind of wraps around the edges more, then a jig wouldn't get you that far. Yeah, I, I can see a jig being especially useful like for promo type stuff because, you know, if you're going to put somebody's logo on a cup, of, you know, for a corporate kind of thing or, or whatever, they're not going to be worried about how big it is and if it goes all the way around and all that stuff. They just want some cups with their logos on there. So you can just drill those out real fast that way, you know. Yeah. So. But, you know, if you were making, you know, Aunt Jean one and wanted a picture of her dog on there, of course, you might want to get the rotary out for that one. <laughs> yeah, most of my stuff does wrap around pretty good. So I know that's, you know, not really going to work. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I was just looking at opt. I mean, I, I didn't want to go and, you know, practice yeah. all this shit to find out that I can only do an I, inch and a half wide I, or something. I mean, that's I like... Just, <laughs> I just had a crazy thought too. You know, some of these lasers for fabrics, especially you can get a belt and that's what that U channel was really for is to rotate a, a conveyor belt so that it pulls the material in as it, as it runs. Um, if you could put a rubber belt on there and build some sort of jig where the cups would sit in there nice, but they wouldn't move around, but had enough room to spin as the belt moved under them, you could literally spin 12 cups at once. Jason, <laughs> Where you at, bud? <laughs> yeah. Get that machine. Get, get those trying, 3D printers are working. <laughs> you, you're trying to take away from my business there, Brian. No, no. No, I'm trying, <laughs> well, no, I'm trying to get I, you to add on. Those probably wouldn't work. <laughs> no, they, they do work like the uh, the UV printers. The UV printers do exactly what you're talking about. They roll yeah. They roll them as the, as the, I guess, the Y-axis kind of moves. It's on a, a jig. They have a proprietary jig that as it moves the cup rolls with it mm -hmm. it doesn't it does the jig doesn't physically turn it but the friction of it against the bed right actually causes it to rotate as it prints on top of it yeah so it's feasible is... i wouldn't want to build one but no. it, i'm sure it's feasible <laughs> well hey this brings me to another thing just jason <laughs> for our 51s is there it would would there would there be a thing that you could build that uses the same motor that would put, say, three, three, three cups in a row, so that machine can just swipe three cups in a row, and all three cups rotate. I would think um, that would be. Yeah, it's it's possible, but but in reality, it's not much faster because you're still you, negative. There's a lot you, of white space you, in between. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of dead space. There's a lot of travel time with the head. Right. And right. the difference between that travel time and swapping out a cup real or, quick. It's or, not really practical. Yeah, instead I get of, that. Yeah. Instead of scanning everything at once, you could do it in groups or each one individually. Then it would skip all that dead space. Yeah, but then you're still doing the same amount of work because then you got to replace those yeah. three cups. So it's just like doing three different cups. You, you still got you to only, replace. Yeah, you'd only literally be saving about 12 seconds per cup. Cause, I mean, it, it, I can switch a cup within a few seconds. Usually before my yeah. air assist shuts off, I've got the cup yeah. changed yeah. and start. Well, that's what so you got to be standing right this. there, though. With Brian's point, you can actually walk away for, thir well, in theory, you could, you know, do something else for 30 minutes and not have to be there every right. two minutes and 20 seconds or whatever yeah. it is. No, that, right, that, right. that is a good point. But then when I'm I wouldn't that, buy it, I mean, I don't think it's commercially viable, but yeah. it, well, there is a use. Yeah, the honestly, main the, the main workflow. the main issue with that would be is to to have something travel that distance you'd have to have some kind of interconnect between the drive wheels, um, which would work for tumblers. But if you're doing mugs or things like that with handles and stuff, obviously that wouldn't work. Um, but doing tumblers and stuff, yeah, you could make a jig that 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 could hold multiple cups. And like Jared said, you could walk away or not walk away, but just do something else with your time, um, and knock three out. But um, 
I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, between five and six minutes, I think, or four to six minutes for a cup. Yeah. I mean, it's. The, it's, the workflow is perfect with, with yours anyway, you know, because once you get it set up, all you got to do is flip the tensioner, you know, and yank the old one out, slap the new one in and hit the button again and go. And, yeah. and Oh, yeah. It's after, you know, you're prepping the next cup to go in and packaging up the one you just got done. And it's just the right amount of time to do that so that you're constantly doing that workflow, but it's just not you know, so hectic that you can't keep up. Yeah. So it, yeah my my, images, engraved, are, my images are pretty big. So it, it's a, they're about 10 minute um, jobs, but um, you know, on the 30 ounce. So, you know, but like, like I was just saying, it takes seconds for me to change them. Um, yeah. So I, I can't kick out at least five, you know, six uh, cups an hour, which, you know, yeah, that's when it becomes an ATM machine money. when you're doing 10 or 20 or 100 of the same thing and you're just pumping those <laughs> things out. Yeah, because yeah. after you get started, usually like I'll engrave like about five of them. And then on that sixth one, while it's going, I'm I'm prepping to clean the other ones when it's coming out. And, it's, and it, it gets into a, like you said, a repetitive cycle to where you're, mm -hmm. you're loading one, cleaning it, packing another one. And it's just kind of a, a oh, workflow yeah. that way. Yeah, it just feels right as you're doing it. I mean, it, it just flows. Yeah. Yep. Still the best. No. <laughs> oh, I love it. I have. I, I can't say enough about your rotary. That's for sure. That thing's that thing's definitely. Uh, yeah. You know, put yeah, a little I, bit of money back in my pocket. <laughs> so. <laughs> maybe maybe he'll make a, a platinum version that's all metal. Well. <laughs> That's actually, it, actually, actually, all what the heck? Oh, that's actually all metal is coming. But the, with the, the it, there'll be a price increase, I'm sure, because that ain't that's yeah, not cheap. There'll be there'll be a slight yourself, yeah. slight price increase, but the uh, mainly the main components like your drive wheels, um, the top caps, the the ball screw wheels that adjust your height, the the little offset for the sled to move back and forth that that'll be uh -huh. metal. So the main main components of it would be metal. Yeah, Some I've of them, seen, like the clamp, clamp and stuff, will still be plastic because it's, it's not cost effective to yeah to pr to to have a mill something that intricate. I mean, the cost yeah. would just be ridiculous. Yeah, you know, and I've are seen you the, the buzz around about well, you know, all, all, some of these other rotaries. Um, I wouldn't call them competition, I guess, because I haven't seen anything that even touches yours. But um, they're going all metal, and I've seen some comments about why is the Rotoball is so expensive and it's all 3D printed. But you know how many failures we get from that? The last one I had was that foot that I broke because I dropped yeah. it. That's the last service call that's been put in on a broken part, unless it was with shipping. But we talked about that since you yeah, went to that phone pack. People complaining about light burn being expensive. It's like, are you kidding me? Where can I get a free copy? Are you kidding me? That's the best $80 you'll ever spend in your life. Yeah. yeah, and it's only thirty to renew after that. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The, the the biggest thing with that is like the plastic and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've over the course of time, obviously things have gotten a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I mean, like for well, your, me, your a lot of issues that I've a custom thing and 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 building it is like your passion. That's your baby. So yeah, mass, mass producing it might feel like you're getting. You know what I mean? Out of your element, some. I mean, because I know yeah. you like crafting those things. That's that was how it all started. You know. Yeah, but it's getting to the point now where it's it's it needs to advance as far as the metal stuff and um obviously building building it from the ground up literally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it I've gradually gotten enough to where I can start doing stuff like that, um, which is good for me yeah. and for for the end user, of course, but. Yeah. Well, we'll help you innovate any way we can because we love that. We love innovation. Yeah. So. Hey, Jason, are you um if you if you do that, are you gonna? It's are the components gonna be the same size basically? Yep. Uh, so it's like, the, if I wanted to switch stuff out, I could buy a kit and switch it out if I wanted to. Yeah. At some point, um, probably in the next six months or so, once they're released as a full metal assembly, they'll be parts available for that and at some point obviously those parts will go away and then when people have problems for new new users obviously they'll pay the, the full price but with people that have already had them they'll get the upgraded parts for like a discount or something like that just to to replace it all kind of thing so 
Um, that's kind of where I'm where I'm heading with that because at some point the plastic's going to have to be faded out. But um, but yeah, if you wanted to upgrade it, there'll there'll probably be a kit put together or something to where you can upgrade it if you already have uh, the rotary. Nice. I, don't, I don't know why I would, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was just yeah. A question. Yeah, I mean, if something breaks, you might as well put the new piece in. But you know, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And I've had some issues with O-rings, I guess, in the past. I don't know if I got a bad batch or just people storing them inappropriately. But uh, I've had I had I had one guy send me pictures, and it looked like it sat under a dang table saw yeah. for six months. Mine, and wondering mine are why, wondering why the a little bit. <laughs> and wondering why the wheels are you know. Yeah cracking but they're going to all get shipped or um once the metal comes out everything's going to go silicone so nice. ho hopefully that'll eliminate those issues yeah. um so that's kind of what's to come with that and uh i'm probably i've had some people asking about trying to make the low roller a dual lift rotary for the Nova 24s, because that's really the only machine that doesn't have that capability or can't have that capability due to the, 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 the height restrictions. Um, so I may look at doing something like that and see how that goes. If, if it takes off, then, then it might make that uh, a permanent fixture. That'd be cool, too. All right. Looks like Grant's on here, so y'all can hit him up on any of the stuff that's in his wheelhouse. How are you, Grant? He's ignoring you. <laughs> That's okay. I get that a lot. You, you, put, him on, you, put, you put him on the spot. Yeah. He thought you were going to ask him when, 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 the, when the items are coming in, if they order today. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. That's <laughs> that's, that's like an every, every week question. Seems yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, <everybody's> but, <laughs> I noticed a lot of people are getting their machines earlier than expected not, as of late. That That's that used good. to happen quite a bit. The, I mean, they, you know, we're pretty conservative or used to be with our numbers anyway. We'd rather, you know, promise something that's relatively going to happen. And if it shows up early, then we can shoot the moon, you know, as opposed yeah. to promising something we can't deliver. And, yeah. you know, so sometimes they are tending to show up a little early, which uh, is good. We need to boost the morale for logistics. Oh, I used the L word. We can't use that word. <laughs> um i don't have anything new now uh the cameras you know there's a, a chip famine and lightburn was having trouble finding the 95 degree and the 110 degree cameras for the uh for the thunder cams uh so we went with an 85 and a 120 let me look at that i might have that wrong Anyway, the camera's changed a little, but it not nobody should really worry about it. It's still going to be the same. You just have a different calibration setting to select for that new lens distortion thing. Uh, but other than that, it's the same. So don't freak out if we start sending cameras that are a little bit different. It's where it's set up. And I, I still haven't seen mine. I don't know where it got lost in shipping or something. What's that? Your camera? <laughs> camera. No. Did I not send you a camera? No. Oh I'm good. crap. I mean, <laughs> did I send you a mount? It's lost in camera. No. So it was lost in shipment. <laughs> Hang on, let me make myself a note. Well the mount that we were working on, we may have to reconfigure because we've discovered that some of these cameras we're getting, they don't have the, the connector on the same side. And these mounts were made so that you can't install them backwards. You can't put anything in wrong. But the problem is now the cameras are being mounted upside down if we use this mount because it's not interchangeable. So we're not working on the Well, we need to do some redesign on the mount to make it applicable for any equivalent cameras we may have to use. So we we're still got that in research and development right now. It's not ready for beta, but I'll send you one of our mounts when we get it hammered out. So cool deal. Yeah, the camera thing's crazy. The very first uh, R and D we did on them, we were using those little ELP ones, those square ones, uh, and had that mount that was solid, you know, and it just screwed the camera screwed in it, and that was all you got. And uh, after that, we've after messing with that for six or eight months, we decided it's probably best just to go with light burn cameras. 
So yeah, the e ELPs are pretty good. I use them on my on my bigger lasers. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I'm not. I'm not one for a camera so much. I don't do the stuff that everybody else does where you're you're trying to save every last piece that you can and and stuff like that, but it definitely definitely come in handy when you want to try to monitor it. if your computer's at one end and your laser's at another end, you can kind of monitor things with it, which is pretty nice. Right. Yeah. Now, uh Chris had a question. Um he's uh, asking about RD works and I think there's a ticket. Um let me check real quick. The the RD works is not typically want what you want to use. You can, uh, but you should have light burn. Uh, we should have given given you a key. Uh, let me see if I uh, answered you in that ticket. I thought you had a ticket. Um, okay, so all you need to do is just go to download uh, light burn. And uh, download it and put your key in. Or we'll actually use the trial. Don't use your key uh, right now. Use use up. Okay, so I, so you are running Lightburn now. Chris is chatting. If y'all are not in the chat window, so. Okay, <clears throat> so I don't know if I understand your question. Um, if you've got Lightburn installed, you I shouldn't do need have Lightburn installed. It's just when you're going through the instructions and then you're supposed to install this, it doesn't make it clear that if you have Lightburn, do this. If you have the RD works at this point. I see. Uh, oh, in the uh, installation manual? Yes. Yeah, that's see that that was uh, adopted from the global manual, and most of the rest of the world, or a lot of the rest of the world, still uses RD Works, so that's why that's in there. Though, so we put some blurbs in there about Lightburn, uh, but typically people don't read the manual, so we don't have that question come up very much. Uh, well, I'm one of those people that read the manual because I'm trying to get this thing set up, for, so I want to get you on a phone call for the hour training. I have it plugged, at least plugged in. Okay. Um, have you signed up for the training? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, okay. And and if you have anything in the meantime, you know, we'll be glad to address them. You know, um, I mean, have you done a test cut or anything yet? Are no, because they, it's not in front of me right now. So it's at my other shop. So I'm in charge of it, but they need to put the exhaust on it. Okay. Um, which they'll do sometime. Gotcha. Hopefully before Tuesday, but I. Um, what is the best way to connect the between communicate between the computer and the laser? Um, uh, uh, the majority of people use USB. I prefer an Ethernet connection if your computer has an Ethernet port on it. But you can set up the USB right now, and the wizard will go out and find it. Um, need to make sure that the FTDI driver, the USB driver, is selected uh, on the Lightburn install so that it'll install the driver to communicate with it. And then it'll pick it up automatically. We've got some videos on. on yep, exactly. I saw those. Okay. Um, and then and then you can use that, and then we can set up the Ethernet when we're on, doing your session or something if you want to make that available as well. But I prefer Ethernet. And one reason is because I have multiple lasers and multiple computers, uh, and it's easier for me to manage and navigate them that way. Connection, so I kind of missed that one, but I'll hook it up for from USB to the there, and then um, and then if um, so, I got material in. It's I got Romark one uh, sixteenth inch plastic, two color, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's ready to go. Okay. Um, boom. <laughs> I think Robert said that that to hold the material down and it just sit there. Um, yeah, and there's some pins that you can make or buy. Um, you can cut them out yourself. There's multiple ways you can use magnets uh, to hold it in place because the honeycomb is steel, so you can use magnets uh, for that kind of thing as well. Got it. And if you use the knife blades, you and got then, so the plastic piece itself is. Uh, 12 by 24. Okay. Drawing, so I'm trying to draw some lines. So 
when you place the material in, are you supposed to put it up in the corner to corner? Or are you supposed to do a little offset, like a, like a 16th or 8th inch, inch offset? Well, most people just put it wherever they want or, you know, up close to the front and center, you know, where you can work on it easily. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, and the positioning is where the red dot and things come in. But if you want to build a fence, if you're going to replicate the same kinds of things on the same substrate, you can actually just cut yourself out a little fence or, or mark it however you want uh, to where zero zero is so that you can slide it into that same position every time. But zero zero uh, is where the red dot is when it's in the home position. Right. And if you'll notice, that's not on the exact edge of the honeycomb. So the bed is bigger than the actual work area. But uh, that red dot is zero zero. So that that is your home point. Um, so because I'm the one that's making the tags. So I, I'm since uh, I got four rows or three, four tags, I can get 96 tags out of, out of a piece of material. But when okay. I cut out the tag, I don't want it to go past and then hit the edge of the bed with the laser. That's why I was asking if the material has to be offset just a little bit. Oh, it, it all won't, the way through. Yeah, it, it won't uh, it won't hit the side. It, it knows where the sides are as long as all of your homing sensors are working. Uh, it knows where it's at at all times, so it won't hit the side. It, it just won't let you do the job if you don't have the orientation correct. It'll have slop over on your machine. It'll just it'll pause and say slop yeah. over. Yeah, yeah it, it won't let you. It won't let you mess up. Yeah. Um, and and then you can design it, you know, as per whatever the size of that is. And actually, the placement is the 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 last thing. Um, but you there's a number of ways that you can do that, and and we can go over those, uh, depending on what your needs are for that. You know, if you're doing pretty yeah. large production and doing the same thing a lot we can develop a workflow for you that'll be real smooth yeah that's what i plan on doing is just having a couple templates one line two line three line text uh, okay and certain sizes and once i get the and then i don't want to cut all the way through the material i'd rather have it go through and then snap the material off so i can um, lift it up as one big sheet and then snap them yeah and you can absolutely out, do that um you can also add tabs i don't know how that would look on that two color you know looking at the edge but you can also make tabs you know where it'll stay in place and allow you to snap it out uh, got it okay well it does something we can talk about when i have the appointment and okay get, uh, all right sounds good and uh if you have any questions in the meantime you can still shoot us an email or whatever don't wait till our session we're here for you whenever you need us so uh like i said i just got to get it connected and play around with it a little bit and gotcha. burn material all right. <laughs> all right sounds good thank you sure sure absolutely so, all right um anybody else have anything hi uh brian this is Harjit here hey there. Uh, how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm well. I'm well. Anxious to wait, anxiously waiting for my machine to come. I made the final payment. Uh, awesome. <laughs> uh, I have a question regarding the exhaust. Uh, remember, you answered it that the exhaust fan be close to the outer of the kit pipe, right? Uh, in my case, little uh, passage which is quite narrow to go through so i was wondering can i have the fan outside the house absolutely it would need to be protected well that one i don't know if the one that comes with it uh, what machine are you getting i'm getting the 24 so that's uh I, it looks pretty waterproof to me um it, it's an it's it, that's one of the inline fans uh, yeah. i don't know if it's rated for outdoor use um but i i think if it was under an eave or something like that or you know protected from the rain i don't know uh i don't know if i could officially recommend that but hey I, you know it, yeah having the fan on the outside is best practices for exhaust and lasers anyway that way that there's no not positively pressured part of the system inside the same 
building that people are in. So that's actually the best way to do it. And it would be a lot easier for me to clean the fan and stuff outside because uh, mm -hmm. inside it, like it would be a problem getting under in, inside a narrow passage, you know. Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I build I build a shelter for just over the. Don't spray it down with water to clean it. Right. Yeah, it's probably not waterproof, but you know, <laughs> nothing to do with you or anybody else. But man, I, I I work for Gilbarco. We make gas station pumps, and you guys would be amazed at the things I see. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Um, There's one video of a lady. She had a uh, plastic grocery bag, and she filled up with gas, tied it off and put it in the trunk of her car. And it's like, oh, oh Lord. That, that's nice. That, I, I wonder how that worked out. <laughs> Maybe if she was just right down the street, she had a couple drops left. But. Well, I'm playing with pictures again, trying to engrave photos. Are you? I, I still have to finish the high res part of, of that thing that I'm doing. Um, how, how's your stuff coming? Well, <laughs> it's all right. I mean, I rewatched our video with uh, Chris, and I just can't figure it out. I'm using Alderwood, mm -hmm. and um, like I know there's just like one thing that I'm missing because it looks good. It just doesn't look great. You know what I mean? So like, there's one thing that I need to work on and fix. I just need to get on the phone with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't played with actual photos anymore. I still have to finish those experiments. My homework assignment. So, uh, <laughs> Grant, do you have a picture you can share? I, I'm pretty I've good done. at. Photos. You can always reach out on the side. I've I'm pretty good at photos. Um, you guys can see some of my work on Facebook at Lasered at the Speed of Light. Um, sure thing. Yeah, man. I'll send you some pictures of what I've done. And if you see something right off the bat, just let me know, because I'm no expert. I don't get a whole lot of time to play with them, but when I go in there, I want to be good. You said laser at the speed of light? Lasered. Lasered at the speed of light. Lasered at the speed of light. Awesome. Aside from photos, though, everything's going pretty good, Brian. I ordered um, mm -hmm. a bunch of different types of wood from that website, which I'm not going to say yeah. the name because it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I got a bunch of different kinds, and I'm going to play with it because I, uh, I get asked every day, how does this word, wood react to this and this and that? I'm like, oh, pretty good. Did, uh, did that rotary show up in one piece? Oh, yeah. Okay. Does it it's work? It's working really good, too. Yeah, I need to do the uh, – what is it called? The the calibrating that you do for it? Mm -hmm. I haven't done that, so maybe I should schedule a call. Yeah. We got plenty of room on our schedule. We'll even <laughs> we'll even help Thunder employees. Isn't that neat? <laughs> There's also videos that I could watch. So I'm gonna do that first. Just like we expect everybody else to do. <laughs> cool. Um do I have anything on my list? I talked about the cameras. I think that's really all I had. What about your stuff with uh, Russ? Yeah, that's that part I have to do the second the second half. The um, HR head? Yeah, yeah, I need to do the HR head thing. Let's see if I can find it. Um, well, that's not what I was looking for. I'll just put the link in the in the tech i think i put it in there last time but i'll i'll find it and put the link back in there again my screens are all oh there it is up there yeah my screens are all out of whack right at the moment i just remembered something i never updated you on so you remember when we were working on that cup for my stepdad the yes. police badge mm -hmm. so it was for his retirement party right and we know somebody locally that has a laser Okay. I forget what he has off the top of my head, but he made him basically the same cup, but mine mm -hmm. looked like light years better, man. It was so much better. 
I was kind of ticked off that he made the same one, but his is trash <laughs> compared to what we did. Um, let's see that. Let me what find that. Did he have? There we go. I'm gonna, and and this thing is not really published yet, but I'm gonna put that link in the uh, in the tabs. Th this is some really wild stuff that deals with speed and power and line interval and um, some some other things. So. And it's got some original works in here in the actual formula. There's a formula for doing photos, um, like a mathematical formula. So I'll put that up there. And I've got to finish the second part. I'm going to try to do that this weekend, uh, these these next two patterns for the for the dot thing. Then I'm going to try a picture, but I'm not going to I'm not going to process it the, the normal way because I'm not normal. But um, we'll see how that goes. It was a full spectrum. That's what it was. Whenever okay. I go back over to my mom's, I'm going to take a picture of it and then take a picture of the one that we did. Mm -hmm. and you'll see. Gotcha. There was something else, too. Um, oh, those files that I sent over? Yeah, that's it. I was going to talk about that, too. I've, I've got a, a uh, I think I've got a fix for that. And I'm just going to put a screenshot, a JPEG of kind of what it is. Uh, and then just have it where you download the entire bu bundle of files at once. That way you don't have to gotcha. pick and choose. Gotcha. So, Thank and you, I'll sir. put some sample pictures up and then I'll post that uh, article, you know, and give it to y'all so you can show it to people. Do we need to password protect the files and, and give Thunder people the code so everybody on the internet's not getting those files? Mm, yeah, I would say so. We'll we'll just let our folks know what the password is and ask that they keep it separate, yeah, uh, or secret. So, uh, I mean, I don't mind giving that stuff out, but you know, I don't know the. I know it was only licensed for us, right? Uh, I think through what he did, so I, I don't want to. Definitely don't want to get in hot water that way. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I think we should password protect it too. I agree. I agree. So, Right. What was it y'all were talking about? Um, there's a list. There's, there's some files that um, Chris got. He bought and he got the release so that Thunder can release them. And it's a bunch of stuff like uh, cutting out tractors and, and airplanes and putting them together and, you know, a bunch of wood projects, a, a lot of birch ply projects, boxes and and oh, all awesome. kinds of vector files and, and they're good files. They're good quality files. He's checked them out too. And there's instructions. So. Well, thank you. Um, but we'll get those up in the next couple of days. I'll have that done by the weekend too. So. Hey Brian, just want to yep. ask, I got, I got to head out here. Anybody yep. got any questions before I head out? No, I think I'm good. Oh. Remind me about right. that camera thing when we get that mount thing uh, hammered out, and I'll, okay. I'll let you test one of them. Sounds so. good. We'll talk cool. to you Appreciate next you. Week. All, All right, right, man. Appreciate you up yesterday, Jason. Not a problem. You guys take care. Mm -hmm. Brian, is there a demand or a, a need for these fans that we don't use? Exhaust. Um, I kept mine just in case, you know, in case that inline ever goes out. I, I just kept it anyway. Um, I mean, I'm sure they have a value. You could stick it on eBay or something. Um, you know, you probably get hundred bucks for it or something. Uh, maybe. Um, but like I said, I kept mine just in case. I, I'm kind of a pack rat. If it's got wires sticking out of it, I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> If it works, so yeah, I would keep it. <laughs> yeah, um, you you may find us wanting to buy one from you if somebody needs one real quick and we don't have one. <laughs> but that that's up to you. It, it I, if it were me, I would hang on to it. It would be worth more to me to have a backup. Uh, I, I'd rather have an extra fan sitting around than be down and have to order one. But. With the distance, I've got to push the air out. I don't know that it would work that way. Gotcha. Are you running eight inch? 
I'm running eight inch. I'm running about 70 feet and I've got the inline eight inch and it's, it'll, I'm having to tone it down. It, uh, it'll go up to 800 cubic feet per minute. And I'm mm-hmm. toned it down about two thirds of the way. It does a super job. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. In that case, I mean, maybe you would want to get rid of it and just maybe get you another, uh, S8 or whatever you got as a backup since you, you know, since you've already got that plumbed in and it works, that would be an option. But if you had a chance to have a backup fan, it certainly wouldn't hurt. And for those rare situations that something may happen. Well, I noticed that Robert put on that something the last couple of days about buying it, have an extra lens mm-hmm. and in case we drop one or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a list of recommendations of things that we may want to have for backup? I get asked that a lot, so we should probably put something like that together. But typically, lenses, maybe a spare mirror or a set, um, those are the things, you know, that typically fail on people. One of the things, I mean, if you want to get real weird about it, sometimes as far as our uh, failure rates show anyway, the uh, sensor, the water flow sensor in the chiller is one of the more common items, and it doesn't happen a lot. I've probably sent three out in the past year. You know, so it's not super common, but that is one thing that if you do need it, you can't really get it quick. It's going to have to come from China. Even if you order it on eBay, it'll be through CloudRay, and it'll either come from probably the UK or China or the Russia plant. You know, they won't – I don't think they have those in the U.S. Um, that's really all I can think of. You know, the optics is, is the big deal, and, of course, you've got another small belt in your in your toolkit. You know, it uses a couple of those small belts. So there's some of that's spares, and there's a spare switch in the toolbox. A lot of a lot of stuff is in the toolbox uh, that you you know could go out, like if you crush a switch or something. But um, the optics are the big thing, and we yeah. use IV. Uh, we use two six optics, which uh, Steve Walters, uh, APC, American Photonics. Uh, his lenses are good. Now. He's got lens kits. You can also just get the raw lenses from him. And ours are 20 millimeter diameter. So that's what you want to look for is a 20 millimeter diameter lens. Okay. So, and, and then, of course, two inch is the stock, you know, so the focal point needs to be two inches or 50.8 millimeters. And we've got them in Texas. Uh, if you just email sales at thunderlaserusa.com, they've got them in Texas. They can get them in the mail to you quick. They, you know, usually one to three days on priority mail. So, so, um, I can't really think of anything else. Um, I'm glad Grant and I'm glad Cheyenne joined us today. (laughs) Do you have anything that you want to say from, from your side, since I'm kind of not in the loop on the sales side anymore? Oh, you're not, no, you're good. I'm loving it. (laughs) So, yeah, they, they're saying that it looks like the shipments are coming a little sooner than expected in some cases. So that's got to be a, a good thing, unless it's a total surprise, unless you wake up to get your newspaper and there's a box sitting out at the end of your driveway that you didn't oh, know. Oh, goodness. About. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite so, the surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, and we're working on all the shipping stuff. We're, there may be something in the future to be yeah. determined. Thunder Trucking just started division. Hey, Brian. My name, hey, John. My name's John, and this is the first time I've ever been to the meeting. Danny down there in the other corner mentioned your thing and come take a look at the meeting. How much spare parts do you actually carry in the States? Because you, you were listening to your conversation here, apparently. So you gotta get uh, more the, good, the good thing about these Nova machines is they're pretty much identical. So they all have the same sensors, same motors, same controllers. So we don't have a real varied part list we can narrow it down to a few basic things but i stock as far as warranty situations go uh, motors drivers belts pulleys um switches connectors just relays just about anything that we need Uh, and i've been known to pull those out of my own lasers from time to time if i don't have one handy Uh, but we stock most of the the parts that require you know replacement uh in in, I'm actually in Tennessee is where all the service parts are, the motors and controllers and that kind of thing. As far as Texas, they keep all of the optics and the tubes there. So we also have usually at least one 
of every tube that we can have direct access to. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know enough to know ask the right questions yet. We're just kind of listening a little bit. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, any any question is welcome. Um, but as far as you know, service you know under warranty stuff and that kind of thing. If you had something go out, we do have some proprietary systems on this machine, but a lot of it. Uh, is off the shelf stuff like the SNA chiller, you know, you can pick those up anywhere for about 500 bucks. Um, you know, and so if we don't have something in house, you know, if I have to get on Amazon Prime and get it to you next day, if that's a possibility, I'll do that. You know, so that that's kind of how we work. Um, I've, I've heard with Glowforge and even Epilog and some of those others that their stuff is so proprietary, you have to get it from them. So that causes a little bit of additional delay, but we've got multiple outlets for uh, sourcing, you know, the parts that we need if we happen not to have it on the shelf. So. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we got about 10 more minutes. If uh, anybody has anything else, I'll be glad to, to give it a shot. Uh, Where any, you were talking uh, about your, um, your, uh, lenses how mm -hmm. often do you have to replace them or it, it honestly depends on how well you maintain them there's people that have t lenses that are optics that are 10 years old I've, I've got 10 11 12 year old lasers that have uh the same optics in them um realistically uh, you're probably going to burn out a lens at some point so it'll be good to have one it, it's not super common um but it does happen if they get just a little bit dirty that's all it takes and it it goes downhill from there pretty quick so as long as they're properly maintained and the air assist is right um you know and and all the systems uh are functioning the way they should the lens can last you indefinitely uh, you know uh as as could the mirrors you know as long as they're properly maintained um how often do you have to clean them how often do you have to clean them we recommend that you inspect them at least daily. Some people that run heavy jobs uh, clean them multiple times a day. Um, if they're doing heavy engraving, you know, uh, there's, there's some people that do, you know, three foot by three foot wood and they're doing a reverse engrave on it where everything's engraved except for the letters. And that generates a ton of smoke and a ton of off gassing. So it's, you know, uh, it's going to depend a lot on that, the duty cycle, the environment, the kind of exhaust you're running, how effective it is. So there's a lot of a lot of factors at play. Uh, but ultimately, if you get your air assist to help protect that lens uh, from the smoke and the heat uh, and you're not generating unnecessary uh, residue, then you usually check it once a day. You know, uh, it may not need cleaning that often. A lot of it will depend on what you're doing. So right, thanks. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's all I've got, guys. Um, I've got one more question, Brian. Sure. Uh, the air assist uh, in one of the uh, webinars or whatever. Did you go over splitting the two airs going into the air assist or? It was something about cutting a hole in. I didn't quite follow. Well, yeah, we were talking about uh, using an external air assist for the high stage and using your stock pump for the low stage and plumbing in two pumps, basically. Um, and, and that's more of a that's more of a odd modification kind of thing. It's not something that I that probably shouldn't be uh, streamlined. But there are some people that want to push the envelope and do some things to their systems. I, I don't know if I would see a whole lot of benefit in it. You know, uh, for some people there is some people like with the single air assist, like on the mini 60, they don't have a dual air assist. So there's no choice. Uh, and those are the ones, the guys that are usually talking about that, the ones that don't have the dual air assist where they can have a high and a low. So that's generally where that stuff's coming in, you know, for the most part is so that they can have two stages. Where do I need to look at to set? I remember seeing where you said to set the uh, high and low. Um, are are you using the stock air pump? No, I've got the outside. Okay, so no. yeah, you, you'll want it. You'll want to govern it at 40 psi going into the system. 
you know, uh, as far as adjusting them at the at the valves, uh, if you don't have any way to quantify the air pressure that's coming out, um, then you just listen and feel. But you want a good bit of air on the high side, um, maybe not all the way open, but pretty close to it. You know, I usually run about 20 or 30 PSI air, you know, on cuts, um, you know, like on half inch or three eighths or something like that. Um, a little bit more on half inch or three quarter. Uh, if I need to, but you know, and again, it'll, you'll just have to get a feel for it unless you want to put a gauge on it, uh, which is a whole nother rabbit hole to jump down to quantify the air assist pressures. Um, one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. there was, uh, somebody brought up a log that they maintain when they make a cut, uh, log in what they cut and what settings. And so they can refer back to it. Was, did somebody fix a spreadsheet for that, or is something we just make ourselves? Uh, that's usually something that you make yourself. And yeah, I use the library. I just add entries to my library, okay. you know, and then do it in Lightburn and just keep the library maintained. That's the way I do it because I don't do paper much. Uh, but there's absolutely nothing wrong, and it's not actually a bad idea to just have a notebook there and write down, you know, what you had, you know, for those materials to look back on. But uh, I do mine through the Lightburn library. Uh, okay. But there's nothing specifically made for that. That'd be something you had to make on a spreadsheet, you know, or, or something like that. Now we've got those PDFs of the of the presets, you know, the ballpark material I'm, settings, uh, as well as the library you can download for your machine, you know, the Lightburn library that pre-populated one that we send out. It's okay. on that thing. Have I went you got ahead, the link to it. Yeah, I went ahead and uh, made copies of it. So that it's sitting right there and I can open it up. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. Let's see. Make sure nobody has any chats on here that I haven't seen. Well, all right. Um, I guess I'll uh, call it quits unless anybody else has anything else. And uh, uh, You have a great night. I will. I will. And I'll see you day. next week. And if you have any questions, uh, in you know, in the meantime, uh, you can email us at support at thunderlaserusa.com or give us a call or whatever, and we'll be here if you need us. Take care, Brian. Take care, Alrighty. guys. Right. Have fun have with your evening. machine, Danny. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Uh-huh.